What's up, gang? It's Eric Hatch and Robbie T with Hatch Coaching out of Fargo, North Dakota, also with Hatch Realty. But today we're with Hatch Coaching, and we've most likely been where you're intending to go. Proud to be a part of a top 50 real estate team in the country. We're in the fight every day with you, and we're here to bring value today and tomorrow. Robbie, COVID's happening right now, dude. Woo, buddy. Dude, the life, the, the world changed in like literally 20 days. It was like a completely different world. It was nuts. Yeah, and, and you and I were talking off camera, and we made the commitment to uh, those people that we have the privilege of influencing to say, we got to start having more of these conversations specifically around real estate, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, uh, you serve more on the lead generation, the lead conversion end of things. I serve more on the leadership side, but uh, wouldn't you know, it has deeply Im influenced and impacted our worlds quite a bit. And I want to talk specifically about schedules, habits, and discipline today. Mm. Uh, Robbie, what have you seen happen with people's schedules since uh, they were quarantined at home? What, what did people do with their schedules traditionally? You know, it's really unique because I, I kind of talk about how if you, you know, the, the clients I get to teach and the people I coach um, are usually ISAs or agents or teams all around the country. Um, really what happened was I've seen honestly two different experiences. Those that had poor habits but were chugging along decently um, they're struggling hard right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas those that had very disciplined habits going into this, honestly, their life isn't that different. If anything, they're booking more appointments than they were, um, obviously because of time of year, but they're, they're chugging along and things are actually quite normal. So realistically, you know, what, what I think the way I like to sum it up is, you know, an event like this, it, it turned a little crack into a, into an earthquake in your habits. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, we're seeing a lot of that and I'm seeing a lot of people fall off. They went into the bear den, you know, their eating habits fell off, their, their fitness habits. Um, and, you know, as we all know, those things all layer into each other. When you're eating crappy, when you're not, you know, working out, your brain's not thinking as clearly. So uh, it became like an avalanche of bad behaviors, is how I describe it. And then Tiger King came out and everybody came addicted. <laughs> <laughs> It's, and you dude, are the like, king. <laughs> I, I am the realty king. Yeah, uh, I am. It's like you're peering into my soul right now, Robbie. I was hitting, I was hitting the gym four days a week, plus riding my Peloton, plus making pretty conscious food choices. Mm -hmm. And the moment that I got sent home, I threw myself a pity party. Yeah. Uh, I thought like I'm the only one, and turns out almost everybody's doing it. You and I have a mutual friend and coaching client named Mike out in, uh, out in Seattle, Washington. Yep. Dude is the most disciplined guy I know, right? It's scary. Yeah, absolutely. He is the most disciplined, hands down. And, and he shoots me a message uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's like, Hatch, man, I am struggling. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Man, if, if Mike can't get it together, what happens with us that haven't had the regimented life, right? And so yeah. he just recommitted. You know, he, he just said, I don't want to, I don't want to eat and drink the way that I had been. Uh, I want to work out the way that I was. Uh, and, and it's forcing new habits. And even his wife, Rachel posted on Facebook today that, uh, they've gone now to the gym, uh, at their house and they've just changed it, but they're still pushing really hard and finding a, a, a new threshold for them to get to. So Robbie, those people that you coach and those people that you talk to that had regimented schedules, Mm -hmm. that were disciplined beforehand, uh, they're still shaken, right? Yeah, yeah. How are they persevering through this? You know, I think the, there's what I like to call almost like a freak out moment that everyone has gone through. And it's really interesting because people in different markets go through it at different times. All my coaching clients, and there's some in Kansas City, some in Colorado, us here, uh, some in New York, you kind of go through your, what I call your, your, your panic moment. And Every single one of my clients has, has gone through this. It's crazy. Where for about a week, there was just a massive amount of doubt, anxiety, and fear. And obviously what that does is that rocks you off what you normally do. Because naturally what happens, you're like, is this even worth it? You know, is this worth pushing anymore? Is the world coming to an end? And um, that's what I really describe as the bear cave. And you know, the biggest thing that, that that's helped is honestly talking about what they're feeling. As odd as that sounds, talking about what they're feeling and what they're going through and what their fears are. And almost always what happens is by naming the fears that they were feeling or the anxiety, 
what they realized was it was a lot less painful than they were making it out to be. And by doing so, it made it so much easier to take those first initial steps to get back to a new normal. And Eric, you've said something on, on a webinar with, that we did with Sierra. You said, um, a lot of people keep craving to go back to normal. And you said that what you think people should be doing is recreating their new normal, um, becoming the better version of themselves. And that's really what, what the opportunity you have to go through. And the antagonist to get out of that barricade, it can be a coaching call, it can be naming the emotions, or frankly, what Mike and Rachel said, where they just had enough of it, right? Enough pain that they're like, we got to change something and recommit. Um, you know, different strategies work for different people, depending on who you are. I know for me, dude, I'm meditating like a boss um, because I need to. And frankly, I'm taking, I'm sleeping more than I was mm -hmm. because when, when you're not as, you know, um, rested, it's so much easier for your mind just to rush, rush into anxiety and and go down those rabbit holes and those fear holes. And um, so I, I think for me, it was find, the, find what works for you. Keep trying something. For some people, it's gonna be working out like crazy. For some others, it's gonna be getting rid of the cookies and the sugar. Uh, for some others, it'll be a combination of a lot of different things, but dang it, you gotta try stuff. That's the biggest thing is you gotta try it. Yeah, inaction is super dangerous at a time like this and Netflix propels us to inaction. I want, I want to yeah. name a few different kinds of groups. Uh, I yeah. want to talk about your wife and my wife. Uh, your yeah. wife is a school counselor. My wife is a first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they're at home with our kids. Uh, yeah. Your kids are, are six, three, and almost one. Uh, right. And my kids are five and three. And so we're in it thick. Mm -hmm. And our wives, yeah. for the most part, are trying to be professionals for their careers and then full-time parents slash educators slash please stop eating all the fruit snacks in the damn house kind of people, right? And asking questions every two seconds. Yeah, man. And, and, and some of the people that are watching this or tuning in uh, are saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be that full-time parent at the same time. The advice I've given my, my coaching clients, Robbie, is I'm like, okay, you can't honor a time block schedule. Like oh. our, our schedules are thrown out the window yeah. and we're in an, in, in, in a comfortable environment that is demanding rigidity and we don't know how to bring it. We don't know how to deliver it. And so uh, the grand fortune is it's not about a schedule. I, I've switched talking about schedules and started talking about priority lists of what's the most important thing that you do, because there will be those moments and those breaks in time where your wife, Lauren, or why my, my, my wife, Emily uh, have 20 minutes. And yes, it's a breather time, but it's also, okay, what's the most important thing that I do right now? Because we can't honor that time block schedule anymore, right? Yeah, you know, it's really funny when you're naming that is, that has actually always been the mantra of our ISAs in their lead conversion. Yeah. Uh, because they've always just been, because we know your time can change every day where you're pouring it into. And time blocking works well when things are predictable, while things are not predictable at all anymore stuff. And, yeah, and, 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 and an ISA's job in our world is the constant interruptions of whatever's new is the most important, regardless of what you were working on. New is most important. Correct. So we've always had to work off of that. So that, that makes sense. The only counter argument I would say is I've been advising and a lot of my clients have found a lot of success in this is the one thing you can control is shut the TV off at nine o'clock and finally go to bed and wake up a little bit earlier. Because usually that five to 6 a.m. time you can get a lot done in that power hour and control that hour. Um, and, you know, some people have been doing that work at night. I, it depends on who you are, but I'm the type of person that if I were to work at night, my work would be garbage. It would be so bad. <laughs> uh, so that's yeah, the only yeah. time is carving out like that protective time. Yeah, I've been up since 4.30 this morning. And uh, I know you're an early riser too, Robbie. Yeah. We can get a full day of work done before everybody else wakes up. Yep. Exactly. So, so that is, is certainly worth adopting. Um, I also want to name this, and, and this is super important because I've watched a ton of these now. I've obviously contributed to a lot of these talking about this COVID conversation and, and trying to provide some insights. What I haven't done well until recently is give myself some grace. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, that guy is failing because he didn't eat right today. And that guy uh, was super impatient with his kids or that guy. Cause Robbie, we're all a spark away right now from just, just totally igniting. 
What right? are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen Absolutely. that spark pop on a number of people this week, myself included. Hundred percent, same here. Yeah. And and I just I just want to say, give yourself grace, mm -hmm. give yourself forgiveness, mm -hmm. have empathy for others because they're going through the same thing. And in fact, we're going to talk about that on on our next video here. Is we're going to talk about some empathy. Um, but don't rest in that. Right. Rest in the grace, and then act because you are building for tomorrow. Final piece I want to say on this video here, Robbie, is I, I want to make a bold statement that those that have found success in the last 45 days might be misguided to think that their success comes from what they actually did the last 45 days. Truth, 100%. Yep. Their, their success in the last 45 days is what they did the first three months of this year, not what they did in the end of March and April. And right now, a lot of people are screwed because they're not doing enough right now to make sure that July, August, uh, uh, that those are, are fruitful, meaty months, right? Well, we're so used to that because in, that, in the lead conversion game that I focus on, what you do today, you see the fruit of that labor almost always two, three, four months later. And we've always understood that, right? The whole idea of lead measures versus leg measures. What you're doing today, you'll see the results later. And that's exactly it. I mean, I, I, for people right now, if you're not doing what you want to be doing or you think you should be doing, uh, it's not just painful now. It's going to be a lot more painful another 30 to 60 days down the road. That's where it's really going to hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you've maybe been sitting on some of that inaction, get your priorities in order. Do them when you can do them. Uh, give yourself some grace, but don't just sit idly by expecting to wait for this to pass. And then you're going to get back after it. Those and that are going to gain, those that are going to gain are going to act today. And don't expect the results. So don't pick up the phone today or whatever habit, you know, that you're falling short on. Don't pick it up and think you're going to start selling homes tomorrow. Um, you have to buy into the idea that you're doing the work. So you'll see the results 30, 45 days later. And that's tough for a lot of people. Um, because a lot of us are immediate gratification driven and in, in lead generation, from my perspective, a lot of times it's, it's that long-term play. So, uh, do the right things. And I promise you eventually they'll pay off, especially because 80 to 90% of people are struggling with the exact same things you are right now. And most of them aren't going to come out of this until everyone else does. So you can stand out right now. I love it. Uh, Bobby T, always good to be with you. Man, you've been hanging out with us so far. Thanks for that. We're going to keep delivering COVID conversations as well as a lot of other good stuff here on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is Eric Hatch with Robbie T of Hatch Coaching reminding you to go and to do some good.